Climate change has been worsening as the years go by. This comes from multiple factors, but the biggest factor we have to look at are actually human activities. Statistics brought up from a website called Our World in Data suggested that a majority of greenhouse gas emissions are actually from its use in energy, such as its use in industry, transportation, and even energy use in buildings, as you can see from this data right here. Now, as bad as it sounds, there's actually worse. You see, the climate crisis isn't actually the only global crisis that us humans are to face in the 21st century. In fact, on the 31st of December 2019, the first case of a new virus was reported. The number of infections around the world escalated so quickly that within a span of a few months, it was announced a global pandemic. This new virus was called COVID-19. The global pandemic was a huge shock for many people around the world. Nobody was prepared to face such a calamity in such a short span of time. Everyone then had to adapt to new norms such as wearing a mask when you're in public, practicing social distancing, to even bring your hand sanitizer wherever you go. Because of the pandemic, we witnessed travel bans and a pause in so many industries around the globe. This fortunately has had a positive effect towards the climate. However, the pandemic is surely bound to end soon. People will be able to go back to concerts, dining in restaurants, and everything will go back to usual as COVID-19 gets eradicated. When this happens, the climate crisis will definitely worsen, if not now, in the future. Can we still manage climate change when there are no longer travel bans and industries start to operate in full swing? We will be able to still keep up with the new norms in order to sustain the improvements regarding climate change that we have achieved unintentionally. This is where our group will evidently prove to you the link between COVID-19 and how we manage the global climate crisis. Before we go any further, let us look into how we are currently managing our climate crisis. This leads us to the 13 Sustainable Development Goals by the United Nations. SDG 13's main focus is to make sure that urgent action is taken as a global endeavour to combat climate change. With these goals in mind, a couple of treaties have been established, including the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement. First off, the Kyoto Protocol that was adopted in Kyoto, Japan on the 11th of December 1997 and was enforced on the 16th of February 2005. This protocol, which initiates the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, involves 192 parties. Under the Kyoto Protocol, developing countries are not required to reduce emissions unless developed countries supply funding and technology. This is to satisfy three purposes. Firstly, to avoid restrictions on the development of the country since gas emissions are strongly linked to the industrial capacity of the country's technology. Secondly, to encourage selling of emission credits to nations which are incapable of satisfying their emissions targets. Lastly, to earn money and technologies for the purpose of low carbon investment from annex to countries. As of the 31st of December of 2020, the Kyoto Protocol has been discontinued as a result of countries failing to meet their greenhouse gas reduction targets. Thus, the Paris Agreement is set out to improve upon and replace the Kyoto Protocol. Now, let's dive into the Paris Agreement. The agreement, which involves 191 parties, was adopted in 2015, and its focal point is to strengthen the global reaction towards the threat of climate change. It also focuses on strengthening the ability of countries in dealing with the impacts of climate change. A few countries involved with the Paris Agreement are Denmark, Australia, Japan, and even our beloved country, Malaysia. The Paris Agreement sets long-term goals to lead all nations to first, significantly lessen global greenhouse gas emissions to restrain the global temperature increasing this century to only 2 degrees Celsius while pursuing efforts to limit the increase much further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Secondly, to review countries' commitments every 5 years. Lastly, to provide to developing countries in order to mitigate climate change, strengthen resilience and enhance abilities to adapt to climate change. The Paris Agreement provides a long-lasting framework guiding the global effort for decades to come. This marks a starting point of a transition towards a net-zero emissions world. The implementation of this agreement is also very essential for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. 
Now, let us bring you to how COVID-19 has impacted our climate. The pandemic we face right now has caused several restrictions to help prevent the transmission rate of the COVID-19 virus. For instance, almost all economic sectors were closed, such as industries and factories, transportation and tourism. On top of that, a strict movement control order has been implemented. COVID-19 has definitely played a big role in helping decrease the total amount of greenhouse gases emitted worldwide. According to a few researchers from the Bharati Vinya P. Dean University in Pune, India, a substantial reduction in the demand of fossil oil and electricity has been reported. For instance, in India, there has been an approximately 18.17% decline in its carbon dioxide emissions. Early in the year of 2020, China has also experienced the greatest reduction due to the lockdown of cities and industries to tame the initial spread of coronavirus. Did you know carbon dioxide emissions in China declined by an estimated 315 million tons. That's roughly the annual carbon emissions of France. The United States has also contributed with nearly 13% decrease in its emissions since there has been a major decline in vehicle transportation that started with the lockdown earlier in March and continued as the global pandemic escalated at the end of the year. Although it seems like the pandemic has resulted in a good outcome for our environment, mainly our climate, we need to keep in mind that the lockdown is only temporary and is bound to end soon. This means the greenhouse gas emissions will start to rise as the economy starts and we will be back to square one. So, what can we do to prevent that? To top it all off, we've come up with a couple of our own ideas and solutions on how we are going to deal with the climate crisis and change in the future. Our main idea would be to promote the usage of carbon-free technologies in industrial activities to reduce the amount of carbon emissions towards the atmosphere. The most basic example of these carbon-free technologies are by using renewable energy as the main energy source for factories. This will get rid of those huge chimneys which emit harmful substances towards the atmosphere, endangering the future generations and of course to maintain the drop in emissions during the pandemic. Moving on, we suggest every country to set Singapore as an example on how they reduce their emissions by raising the price of cars on the market. This would promote the usage of public transportation which releases less emissions based on cars and bikes. And of course, the price of electric cars which emits less pollutants would of course be much cheaper. And last but not least, the government should create an educational subject that emphasizes these environmental issues and how to improve the state of the world as it is now. By doing such a simple task, this could produce a better generation which is more responsible towards the current state of the climate. Furthermore, the law could also be reinforced to be more strict and clear so that no grey areas are found for civilians to take advantage. As a final observation, we can conclude that COVID-19 shouldn't be seen as an unforeseen nightmare but instead as a golden opportunity to improve ourselves in terms of discipline and responsibility, in this case by handling our current climate change. In addition, this can be a way to train ourselves to see things in a better light. Our principles are what help us to move forward and prosper for a better future and without any effort, there won't be a promise for a better tomorrow. Thank you. We hope that our presentation was able to help educate people about our climate. Once again, thank you.